Welcome back to ACG's Growth TV. We're here today with Mark Moses, CEO of CEO Coaching International, to discuss the strategic relationship between PE partners and company leaders. Mark, I'd like to first start uh, by discussing a little bit about whether you ever see a disconnect between private equity partners and company leaders that could perhaps jeopardize the success of a deal. What are some causes of that disconnect? Yeah, for sure we do see some of these disconnects and they primarily, they don't happen all the time, but they primarily happen for uh, a few reasons. And one of those reasons is really, the, it's a disconnect between the CEO and the role that they're gonna play and their perception of the role that the PE firm is gonna play. And this primarily happens with the founder CEOs. They're bought by private equity and now they have, they arguably have a boss and, uh, and now they have to agree on how decision-making is going to be made. So really that's one of the problems that we see. Another problem that we see frequently is um, if the deal was a tenuous deal and it was, let's say, hard to get done and the CEO, the, the entrepreneur or CEO felt possibly retraded at the end, that could cause a lack of trust that would need to get rebuilt by um, the CEO and the PE firm. And the other reason, and I really think that these are the main three reasons, is really a disagreement on the pace and strategy the company should take. The PE firm does have an investment thesis that they want to follow, but at times they, they may have different visions on how to get that done. And the role, again, back to the role that the PE firm will play and the CEO will play. What is some advice that you could offer to help build that trust and, and bridge that gap? Yeah, part of it is get really clear up front on what role the PE firm wants the CEO to play and full disclosure from the PE firm on the role that they're, they're going to play. And even though 90% of uh, CEOs believe the portfolio uh, or the PE firms add meaningful value, 58% of them get fired within two years regardless. So that disconnect is usually around not getting clear on what needs um, the PE firm wants to have and what scope of authority the CEO is given. Another, another reason might be the, um, or another way possibly to deal with this is utilize somebody like us, uh, whether use us or somebody like us, somebody to help bridge that gap, a coach that is used to working with PE firms, maybe even a coach that's been a former uh, portfolio uh, CEO that would have the understanding and how to deal with uh, um, the PE firms. And the other issue is if they, the CEO felt retraded at the beginning of the deal and there's a trust breach, they need to remedy that by both being upfront about it and discussing it, trying to build a bridge forward. Otherwise, the relationship's going to be strained ongoing, and ultimately, the CEO is going to get replaced. Could you share with us an example where this dichotomy was at play, this disconnect existed, but was ultimately resolved as a result of implementing some of those, those strategies and those tactics you just talked about? Well, let me give you a great example. One of the largest P firms in the world bought a client of ours. I remember on page 58, there's a number I don't understand. And the CEO got so frustrated, he walked out of the room, went and it was a glass room and he laid down on a couch outside the room. And finally, the senior managing director of this large PE firm says, hey, what's going on with your boy? I, said, I don't think he's interested in answering a number on page 58. He is viewing you as strategic help not grinding about 200 pages and numbers in a deck. So there's another example with the same PE firm where they, where they thought one of the partners was taking too much time off and was micromanaging the time this president was playing as opposed to the result that they were playing. And my counsel to the uh, 
PE firm was, if you want these guys to run the company, you're just going to have to let them go. They have enough money now that they could just say goodbye. So you need to decide, do you want these guys or not? If you do, you got to let them run. They're entrepreneurs. I'll give you one more example if we have time, Carolyn. Another major PE firm in the U.S. bought another client of mine. Then uh, they would sit in on every quarter. We would have a meeting and they would sit in every quarter and just listen. And they liked what they were hearing. My client wanted to buy another company, really wanted to grow, but they were getting long in the tooth in the PE cycle. The PE firm did not want to do it. My client ends up buying the business back for over a billion dollars. And literally four months after the acquisition closed, he bought a billion dollar acquisition because he just wanted to pursue his dream and recognize the people that had bought them weren't even at the PE firm anymore. He was dealing with other people that weren't even vested in his deal. So that getting really clear alignment between the P firm and the CEO will really drive a good outcome for what they want and using coaching, expert coaching to help mitigate that will make a real difference helping navigate between the CEO and the PE firm. Mm, Yeah, certainly some important lessons learned there. Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Carolyn, it's my pleasure. Happy to be back anytime.